Good morning all. NCC and OCC. Normally consolidated clays and over consolidated clays. These are two terms, two interesting terms when we discuss consolidation of soil. In the previous video, we had discussed a few plots, one of them being the logarithm of sigma dash against EF, the variation of EF with log sigma dash was explained, the slope of which was CC, compression index. Now, normal consolidated clays are the ones which had not been subjected to a pressure greater than the present existing pressure. And over consolidated clays are the clays which had been subjected to a pressure in excess of the present pressure in the past. To put things in perspective, let's assume that you have a two-story building constructed at a particular site. If you demolish that two-story building and later if you construct a four-story building, that soil beneath the structure will behave as a normally consolidated clay because that clay had been subjected to just two stories earlier and now it's subjected to four stories. That kind of behavior is called normally consolidated clay behavior. And when you talk about over consolidated clay, let's take the same example. Let's assume that you have a structure, six story building at a particular site. So you demolish that six-story building and later the this, this structure that you build is just three stories, which means the soil had earlier been subjected to a load from six stories and now it's just subjected to a lower load of three stories. So such soil, such clays will behave as over consolidated clays, which means these are the clays which had been subjected to a pressure, six stories in this example, in excess of the present, present pressure, which is three stories. So the plot may look like this. You have log sigma versus EF. This is a usual plot, the slope of which will give you CC. And I can extend this plot like this. So I have marked A, B, C, D, E, F, G here. A, B is a normally consolidated clay. So when you, when, when there's a load at A and as you increase the load or the stress, X axis increases, right? So it starts to plot from A to B. So as load increases, stress increases, effective stress increases and void ratio decreases. So you'll get a B plot here. Let's assume that at point B you release the load just like demolishing a six-story building. So when you release the load or when you demolish the structure, the plot goes like this B E C. And again, if you construct a three-story building, the plot will be C F D G. So A B D E C F is the locus of the point. A was the initial portion. You, st you start to construct a six-story building. Void ratio decreases, stress increases, and you reach point B. And you demolish the structure, which means you release the load. It goes like this. And you again increase the load, and it plot turns out to be like this, moving all the way down to point G. So I can mark two points here. C corresponds to sigma 1 dash and D or B here, B corresponds to sigma 2 dash. So the curve portion AB represent normally consolidated clay, which means in portion AB, the behavior of soil is such a way that it had not been subjected to a pressure 
greater than the present existing pressure that is ncc cd cd represents occ because the soil had been subjected to a higher pressure in the past uh, that is sigma 2 dash and in the portion cd since it's subjected to just sigma 1 dash the behavior is like occ over consolidated clays now this ratio is called as over consolidation ratio ocr which by definition is a maximum pressure to which an occ had been subjected in the past divided by the present existing pressure sigma 2 dash is a maximum pressure to which the soil had been subjected in the past and sigma 1 dash is a stress that is present so sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash is what we call as an over consolidation ratio ocr another term that comes into picture while discussing ncc and occ is a pre-consolidation pressure the maximum pressure to which an occ had been subjected in the past is called as a pre-consolidation pressure sigma c so in field when the soil is taken from a depth for example when you take a soil sample from let's say five meter below the ground level you have the weight of the overlaying soil so let's assume that the unit weight of soil is 20 kilonewton per meter cube so when you take soil from a depth of 5 meter 5 multiplied by 20 100 kilonewton will be the load right so that load or 100 kilonewton per meter square 100 kilopascal stress is getting removed so this causes an expansion due to reduction in pressure when you take soil sample from a depth that soil had been subjected to let's say 100 kilopascal in this particular example and when you take it from the depth it causes an expansion to the soil because of the reduction in pressure and the soil will hence be like an over consolidated clay so when this particular specimen is loaded in a test it may behave like a OCC, like an over consolidated clay. So I have again the same plot log sigma dash and EF here, AB, and I have BC, and I have CD. And in the portion AB, the soil will behave like a over consolidated clay, OCC there will not be much of a change in a change in void ratio because it had been subjected to a higher load so there is no change in void ratio here in the portion a b but as you increase the load after let's say point b it starts into a transition stage so b c is a transition stage and when you further increase the load it takes c d portion which means it behaves like a normally consolidated clay as you increase the log sigma dash there will be a decrease in effect uh, there will be a decrease in void ratio so this behavior cd is like ncc normally consolidated clay and ab is like occ over consolidated clay so at some point between b and c or in that zone lies the pre-consolidation pressure sigma c so in short a further increase in pressure will make the soil a normally consolidated clay and it will trace the path cd now how to determine the pre-consolidation pressure its magnitude the graph that you had seen in the previous slide is zoomed in here so you have the same thing you have ef here and log sigma dash here you have cd portion then ncz portion and you have ab here and the method at which you arrive at the value or magnitude of pre-consolidation pressure is a graphical method for which you find a point E which is a point of maximum curvature or the point of minimum radius. So let's say a point E is here which has a maximum curvature or a minimum radius. So draw a tangent at E let that tangent be EF like 
this you have the tangent ef drawn at e so in short ef is tangential at point e now draw a horizontal line eg parallel to the x-axis at e like this so you have eg drawn parallel to the x-axis now you have two lines here ef and eg now what you have to do is you should bisect the angle between ef and eg ef and eg you bisect and let that line be e h like this now produce back the straight line portion cd of the plot to meet the newly drawn line eh let that point of extension of cd meeting eh be point p like this so point p is here which is a point that you get when you extend cd backward and it joins eh and now you drop a parallel to y-axis to meet the x-axis like this and the point at which this perpendicular drawn meets the x-axis or the log sigma dash axis will give you the value of pre-consolidation pressure so this is a graphical method at which you can arrive at the magnitude of pre-consolidation pressure because this somewhere lies in this zone and it's not a crisp point so the graphical method will give you sigma c the next term is settlement which comes along with the consolidation this figure is the same figure that we discussed in the initial portion of consolidation and when you have a structure built above a soil which is expected to consolidate you should expect settlement as well because as soil consolidates the volume decreases and the building will settle the settlement of the building should not be differential that is a challenge an engineer has to face if the settlement is uniform and if it's within the limit the permissible limit it's quite fine but when the settlement is differential cracks can develop on the superstructure and the building will turn out to be a loss now how to compute the settlement in field the consolidation settlement in field to be specific so you have the estimation of the magnitude of settlement for which you need mv or cc and you need to estimate the rate of settlement for which you need cv coefficient of consolidation so when you build a structure above a soil which consolidates you are interested in these two things the magnitude of settlement and the rate of settlement for example if you're building your house on a clay deposit let's say that you're building a two-story residential building in a clay deposit you should know the magnitude of settlement which means for example if the building will settle 20 millimeter or 50 millimeter and the rate of settlement which means what time it will take to attain this magnitude of death settlement let's say that the building settles 20 millimeters by five years so that's the rate of settlement so for first magnitude of settlement it demands determination of mv or cc and for rate of settlement it demands cv the magnitude of settlement s is given by this expression cc by 1 plus e naught h0 log sigma naught dash plus delta sigma dash by sigma naught dash now this term is quite familiar by now i guess the second expression in which mv creeps into picture is s is equal to mv h0 delta sigma dash so these are two expressions which can give you the settlement s another expression based on the three phase system diagram of course is delta e by 1 plus e naught multiplied by h0 
the terms are discussed here cc is a compression index e0 is an initial void ratio h0 is the initial height of the clay layer delta sigma dash is a change in effective stress brought about by let's say the building or any other structure and sigma naught dash is the initial effective stress so you can use this equation if you know cc and if you want to know cc you can get help from liquid limit equation the one that we had discussed previously 0 0.009 into liquid limit minus 10 or 0 0.007 into liquid limit minus 10 depending on whether the soil is remolded or not